Lamar says, I use Microsoft Office 365 when I create a new document in either Excel or Word. When I save it, it says the document is now read only. If I try to save it again, I have to add R1 or something that's a different name. Why is that? I know it might be related to the fact that I have both business and personal uh, O365 accounts, and I don't know how to tell which ones I am using when I open Excel, for example. I am 71 and used to being extremely computer literate as I started using uh, using in 1968, but now I am slightly confused. Any help appreciated? I think many of us are still trying to figure out all the different rules that Indeed. affect it. I mean, I the the point about accounts is a good one. I've got probably four or five different accounts I use with M365 and sometimes i can't access documents that i thought i you know had on my list my pick list changes based on which account is signed in i mean that comes into play but we dropped a couple of links in as well there's all sorts of other behavior and circumstances to consider on this one you need to um essentially take a look at where you're saving the file what the policies are um permissions things like that so yeah, that's what I was thinking. Where 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 are you saving it? Where did you open it from? Do, what what uh what login are you using to access it so that you know, you know, are you even cuz if you're if you are using an account, maybe you have a guest account to somebody else's OneDrive and you're going into their OneDrive, you're going to have a different experience than if it's your own tenant and your own information. Um and it's crazy cuz like you go into Office and you click on the little stuff on the top if you guys um uh, click on your picture and you click the drop down in office, you're going to see all these different accounts and it's going to tell you which account you're actually using to open that particular item. And then on the name up at the top, the other thing is, is it being auto saved? Um, so did you open it from somewhere and it's auto saving it back or is it like actually downloaded to your desktop and it's not auto saving back and forth? Um, may, maybe there's maybe it doesn't know where to go, right? So there's like all these fun things at the top. Yeah, there's Check the file tab. If any Office application, whether it's Outlook or Word or Excel or whatever, if you click the file tab, that's the one all the way on the left, go down to the account section. You can you can see what account you're using, and you can mm -hmm. also change from whatever account it is to whatever account it may need to be. And as Sherry is su suggesting, the uh, the stuff that you see uh, in the most recently used list and so forth will change with respect to what account you've picked to go looking at things. Another thing to consider is uh, whether you've got these uh, other accounts or other locations, the OneDrives and so forth set up as as uh, as connected locations. And that is also from the file tab under the under accounts. And uh, but if you're uh, talking, they, they so call when we're them about, connected services. So uh, when we're talking about, though, uh, what we're talking about is moving between we have multi accounts and moving in between and using them, and that is different than like a typical user that might have a work account and a business account um, because can't you also assign the default account to open within the office apps i don't think so i don't think it's a default account i think you can do a default account you can do a default account inside of certain applications and you can do default um, applications for file types, but when it comes to the actual account you're using, I think it mm. depends on where you open it from. So I mean, I'm, I'm just thinking of the default from the, it's kind of a relic uh, uh, concept from the desktop applications where that made more sense. Now that we have cloud-based, it's cloud-based access to these, it depends on it's trying to be smart it. and it's trying to help you. So like a lot of times <laughs> if somebody has shared an item with you, it will be like, oh, well, clearly because you're shared from this location, you want to use this account, even though that may or may not be accurate. So that's where I think it goofs up sometimes. It's not it thinks it's smart, but it's not always smart. The well, that's rules one, are too complex. Well, it's one of the reasons like well, you have this problem with like Teams meetings and people complaining, hey, I'm not able to see the chat. I'm not able to interact. I'm not able to do these other things like, well, right. You join the meeting from the wrong tenant. And I'm like, I don't know what the right answer. I don't think there is a right answer. It's different for, for people. But like what I have, I have my core tenant and I use my uh, my desktop Well, my your PWA app for calendar and email and everything for that and for my standard. 
and then I have uh, uh, I have other uh, uh, tabs open. I have uh, uh, incognito mode for my other entire login. So I'm always, so I see something go through and I share calendars between each of them. But when I see something um, coming across, I look at the color code on the shared calendar and then I go over to the open tab for that. And I don't know if that's the best way for it, but it is the least amount of headache for me just to keep those things organized. So I always have the three complete logins open mm -hmm in three places so that I can quickly tab over and accept the meeting invite into that, you know, into that activity or access the file, see into the office account and access the files that, that way. So, mm -hmm. uh, and I know that's overkill for a lot of people. It, it's really enhanced by the fact that I have two giant monitors where it's easy to keep sure. all those things open. Size but, doesn't matter, yeah. Christian. <laughs> <laughs> says the guy with the small monitor <laughs> hey so i'm i'm experiencing what lamar is going through where mm -hmm. i work we were recently acquired and so now i'm living between multiple tenants multiple accounts Oof. and what i find is if i start the document creation from the client so let's say word or excel from my pc it's defaulting to uh the past tenant or the older tenant where mm -hmm. the the product was originally licensed from almost as like a default. And so I'll, I'll get into this thing where it has to be read only, I have to transfer the file and all that stuff around. So Lamar, this probably isn't like the, the, the easiest solution, but what I've been doing it now, and instead of starting from the client, I'll start from where I want to store the file. So let's say my OneDrive in the new tenant or my OneDrive in the old tenant, once the stub is created, then I can open it up in the uh, the full client experience if I need to. But uh, yeah, that's actually I a really handy don't. trick. That's um, it's a tip that I a lot of people who get feel uncomfortable like not knowing where to save it. Um, that's a really handy tip. Another thing you can do is when you open up an application. So for example, Word, and you do File New, up at the top, if you click the little auto save to on immediately, it will automatically pop open. Mm -hmm. Um, and ask you to log into like your OneDrive or whatever. Um, and so you can then make sure that it's saving to the right place. If, if it's already logged in, it should save it to the right place. But then when you click on the title of the document, um, you can actually hover over it and it will show you where it's actually saved. So as opposed to like just making something and having it go into limbo somewhere and you're like, I don't know where this thing is and why I have to make another one, you at least at a bare minimum know where it is. But I agree with you. Like I, I tell people all day long, like just go to the cloud and make it in whatever place you want it to live and then just go from there and then open it, you know, and then it pop it out in the client app. It'll make it easier. That it gets so confusing, guys. Like we're we're there with you. Mm. Like we're dealing with the same stuff. You guys are not alone. Yeah. And <laughs> as another alternative, I just when I'm creating documents, I do it on my local system with local permissions on my hard drive. And then I copy or move the document out to where it needs to be. Yeah. Um, I don't try to author and save across the line just because I know too many permissions intersections are involved. Um, so yeah, Lamar, you're not alone. Yeah. And so the, I mean, with, with the entities I work with, you know, one, one of them being international and clients being international, like I have to store it in those other locations. And so uh, by like default, I mean, mostly when I work and with us clients, Sean, it's exactly the same way I create in my tenant in that one location and and farm it out there but things that i work with with germany they're in the german tenant it's there it's purposeful it's, there's a reason like i have to store it in a certain way and open things and edit in in those locations data sovereignty but, gotta love yeah, it yeah yeah so uh, and, you know it, what's interesting about all this is like the, this is not a new topic in fact when teams came out how long ago was that now five years ago um, six years ago, whatever it was, um, right away, uh, MVPs, we brought up this issue for Microsoft um, saying, hey, the multi-tenancy, it's coming to a head, it's becoming a problem. And we were told that this is a minor issue, <laughs> that they, they understand it, but it's not a priority. And years went by of saying like, hey, this isn't just 
MVPs or consultants, a small number of people working with the multiple accounts, I, it's prevalent uh, across customer groups and it's a serious issue. So Microsoft is looking at it. We may not all be satisfied with where things are today, but they are continuing to look at it and it's getting a higher priority. And there are things with like Teams specifically um, where there are solutions that we're waiting for. We've seen mock-ups, we've seen things, uh, and we're all just waiting for it to catch up to, you know, where the mobile app is, uh, for example, um, which is far ahead of where the desktop app is. Um, but it, it is something that Microsoft recognizes and that they're making progress on. So I have a positive outlook on it from what I've seen. I just wish it would happen faster.